But the reality is, is that, is, is that what we're watching here is this horse race between these two candidates, uh, and that the real issues are the ones we're going to be fighting for in this country after this election. The real issues are the real, one of the reasons why the real news is here in Baltimore. It's because it's on the ground here in these communities where the change is going to take place. And I think that, that you, the energy is out there. You can see it. Uh, I think it has to be galvanized almost outside the mainstream political world and maybe inside it on a local level. Uh, and I, I think that, uh, right. yeah. The, 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 I also think we need to start talking about who President Obama represents, who Romney represents. Mm -hmm. And we began that in the first segment a little bit, about which sections of capital they represent. But I, I've quoted probably more than anyone I've ever quoted on the show, I've quoted George Will. And it's my favorite yeah, quote of all time. <laughs> and George Will said in the last election, let's not get sentimental about democracy. It's not, we don't get to choose whether the elite will rule. We get to choose which elite will rule. Right. And, and that, we can't forget that that's what we're talking about. We're talking about different sections of an elite. And I think it's rather clear. President Obama was backed by Wall Street with a mission. And one of the reasons he, he uh, received more money than Hillary Clinton did very early on, and which is unusual for the senator from New York to raise less money on Wall Street than some upstart junior senator, senator from junior Illinois. senator from Illinois, was because he was being groomed to deal with the coming crisis, the coming financial crisis. And his first job was to get Geithner and Summers in. His job was to manage this unraveling of the global capitalist system. And from the point of view of the banks, he managed it. And, and, and he did it in a way that perhaps a Republican couldn't have. If, you know, either a Republican would have been vilified for bailing out the banks, either because he's bailing out the rich, or he would have been vilified from his own sections of his own party for you shouldn't use public money for this sort of thing. But, 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 but let me just add one other point to this. Mm -hmm. Which is if we, if, we, if we accept the idea, what we're really deciding is which section of the leap is going to rule here. I think if you look at the situation from the global financial crisis and climate change crisis, this elite really is not fit to rule. They really have no solutions and they, they both from climate and from economy, they are driving over a cliff, whether it's a five-year, ten-year massive crisis or whether it's several decades of recession. You can't have austerity and lower wages and not have recession. And they have no other alternative because any other alternative means giving up some of their economic power and some of wealth and that's not an option for them. The problem here is if, if the elites aren't fit to rule, the problem is either is anyone else in the sense that there's no other class in society, whether it's workers or others, who are organized enough, ready to do much of anything. And you can see that electorally. Well, I agree. And I think that a uh, uh, couple of things, you said a lot there. And, uh, and when, when most Americans look at Barack Obama, especially the ones who support, will be more inclined to support Barack Obama or Democrats than they would Republicans. Um, they, they, they see what you're saying, but they also see, but Barack Obama stopped us from going over a cliff. Yeah, he saved it for Wall Street. He saved it for the, to try to patch this hole in the dike of the, of the capitalist world kind of falling apart around itself. But he saved us from going off a cliff. And that's how people view it at the and moment. There's and there's some truth to there's that. There's some truth to that. And I think that I think there are, now you are seeing this world scrambling, this transnational capitalist world scrambling, try to figure out how to save itself from itself. And they can't figure it out. Uh, and people are erupting all over the world. And so, so and you're, they're not erupting here at the moment. They're little pockets erupting here and there. But I think, I think that, that, that that is the issue that will become more and more glaring over the next few years. Uh, the question is, in, in this kind of world where you have media controlled by big business, for the most part, except, of course, therealnews.com, we have media controlled by... And, big, and there are a few and, others. And, we and can't media, claim to be the other one. Democracy Now and our show, and lots of these are not controlled. Yeah. But, but I think that, that, that is, it's hard for people, not because they're stupid, because people are not given the information to grasp what their real power is and who has what at stake here. I think that, that's part of the problem. It's very fresh. That's why you see 90 million people not voting. 10 million pe more people than didn't vote last time. And one of the most fascinating polls came out of Suffolk University. When they analyzed the 90 million unlikely voters, both registered and unregistered, 
43% said they would probably vote for Obama of that 90 million. 43%. 23% said they would consider a third party, and only 14% said they would vote for Mitt Romney. And I think that that says a lot about people who are just disenchanted with the process and what they believe and think. So I think that the fuel is there. People want to see change. It hasn't been galvanized. I mean, I'm, I've talked to people, and we, we had a couple of journalists go to some areas where people were in working class districts that were likely to vote for Romney, trying to find out why. I mean, I, I mean I'm sure some, if there, if there are any Republicans watching us tonight, uh, they will disagree with what I'm about to say, but maybe they won't. Objectively, you can measure it. If Romney's policies are followed, it will be worse for workers. It's not that Obama has been great for workers, but it will be worse under Romney. And you, you can do the math. You can see what these kind of austerity measures would take. Uh, there's simply no evidence that the wealthy keeping more money leads to more jobs. And, and, and if they don't do something on the demand side of higher wages, we're going to be just in stagnation. So yeah. combine that with massive cuts in public spending, and this economy is going to be dead for quite some time to come. Uh, so. But the problem is, 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 is that people that are, you talk, you say this to people, and it sounds like, oh, I can't, under, I can't get that. And it's, it's like just more information out there. And so it, some of this choice has become like faith-based. You know, like now you're just, ch I believe that this will be better. Or it's not a positive thing. It's just like, it's been so bad, I just got to go with the other.